Wolfowitz of Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Now, videotape depositions from the investigation of President Clinton. These tapes were released today by the House Judiciary Committee. We'll hear from four agents who had been assigned to the White House. The first is Brett Chinnery. His testimony is about an hour. This deposition is being held at 1001 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, Suite 490, Washington, D.C. Name of the witness is Mr. Brent Chinnery. This deposition of Mr. Chinnery is being taken in a re-grand jury investigation conducted by the Office of Independent Counsel. This time, the attorneys will identify themselves, please. I'm Mary Ann Worth, Associate Independent Counsel. Michael Travers, Associate Independent Counsel. This time, the court reporter will identify herself as work and witness, please. My name is Elizabeth Eastman. Mr. Chinnery, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear, to the penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Can you tell us your full name spell it, please? It's Brent James Chinnery. Okay. Say your last name, please. It's C-H-I-N-E-R-Y. And your first name is B-R-E-N-T? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm first going to advise you um, of some of your rights. You are being deposed today in lieu of a grand jury appearance. Do you understand that? Yes. And um, this proceeding will be made available to the grand jury, and um, it is being conducted under the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure. Um, you have the right to have your attorneys present outside the room, and in fact, you have three attorneys present outside the room. Is that right? That is correct. Can you tell us what their names are? Uh, Mr. Paul Leibach, uh, Mr. Gary Grinler, and I'm not sure that the other gentleman. David Anderson, David the Anderson, other one? Yes, that's right. The latter two are from the Department of Justice? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, if you, um, you know, wish to meet with them or confer with them at any time during the question today, um, you can ask to have a break and, and do so. Okay. Okay. Um, you, of course, have the right not to answer any questions, the truthful answer to which would incriminate you. Do you understand that? Yes. And you do have an obligation to tell the truth. Um, you may be prosecuted for perjury if you lie, if you are misleading, or if you answer, I don't know, or I don't remember, if in fact you do know or do remember. Um, do you understand those rights as I've explained them to you? Yes. In addition, um, we um, have agreed um, with the Department of Justice that we will not pose any questions to you um, that seek information regarding protective techniques or procedures of the Secret Service, including security technologies, armaments, or devices within or around the White House complex. Do you understand that? Yes. And if any questions that, that any of us ask you today call for any such information, please advise us of that. Okay? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. And um, in addition to that, we, will, we understand that, that there is certain privileged information to which you will not be testifying today, and we will attempt in our questions to avoid asking you for privileged information. But if any of the questions do seek privileged information, please, you know, let us know and, and assert the privilege or step out of the room and consult with your attorneys. Okay? Okay. okay. Right. Um, are you currently employed? Yes, I am. And um, where are you employed? The United States Secret Service Uniform Division. Okay. And how long have you held that job? Uh, for eight years. And what is your age? I'm 35. And what have been your duties generally with the Secret Service over the last eight years? Uh, what types of jobs? Where have you worked? Uh, I've been assigned to the West Point. Of the White House? Yes. For, for the entire eight years? Uh, for six years. Okay. We'll, we'll confine ourselves to that then. Um, so for the past six years, you've been assigned to the West Wing at the White House? Yes. Okay. And um, in the last three years, what post have you held? Uh, I've worked every post in the West Wing. Okay. And have you had any particular assignment over the past few years? Yes. And what is that? Before that, were you one of... 97. Excuse me. 97. March of 97. Mm -hmm. All right, so since March of 97 until the present, you've been steadily assigned? To yes. And, um... Prior to that, um, were you generally unassigned? Yes, for two years prior to that, I was unassigned. Okay, and that, that means you could have been assigned to any, any post in the West Wing on a rotating basis? Yes. Okay. Um, what shifts do you work, or uh, have you worked in the past three, four years at the White House? I worked uh, two trips. Uh, 
from uh, 6.30 in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon, and then from 4.30 in the afternoon to 10.30 at night. Okay, and do you alternate week from those? Yes. I do. Do you remember when you first met her? Not the exact date, no. Okay. Do you remember generally when you met her? Approximately how long ago? Probably around three years ago. Was she an employee at the White House when you met her? Yes. Do you remember what her role was at the White House when you met her? <clears throat> All I know is what kind of past she had. She had intern past. Okay. And um, so when you first met her, it's fair to assume that she was an intern at that time based on her past? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, did that come to change the type of pass that she wore? Did there come a time when it changed from an interim pass to something else? Yes, once she left the White House. Okay. Do you know if she was ever a permanent employee at the White House? No. No, you don't know? No, I don't know. Okay. Had you ever heard that she was employed as a permanent employee at the Office of Legislative Affairs? No, I never heard that. Okay. When she wore the interim pass, what was your understanding of where she worked physically, if you know? Uh, in the East Wing. Okay. Now, um, is there anything that you can tell us about when you first remember speaking to her? Or seeing her, whichever came first? Uh, when I first saw her. Okay. Uh, I saw her in the West Wing. Right. Okay. And um, what do you remember about that encounter, if anything? She asked me where the president's location was. It was a Sunday morning, I remember. Mm -hmm. Do you remember um, generally what she said? Just if I knew where he was at. Uh, I replied that uh, he was at church. I wasn't sure what time he was due back. Okay. Did she ask you anything else? No, that was the conversation. Did, did you see where she came from when, when yeah. she approached mm -hmm. you? Where did she come from? She came from the West Colonnade, mm -hmm. which is, comes from the residence. Mm -hmm. And um, was she wearing a pass that day? Yes. Okay. And do you remember what kind of pass it was? She had her intern pass on. Okay. And can you tell us generally when this was? Best I recall it, it was in the winter sometime, uh, like January or February. Mm -hmm. And um, January, February of what year, if you know? I can't recall right offhand. Uh, mm -hmm. More than a year ago? Yeah, at least a couple of years ago. And is that the first time that you became aware of seeing her? Yes. Okay, and do you, did you know her name that day? I saw her in her past, yes. Okay. And you knew it was Monica Lewinsky? Mm-hmm. Um, did you have any further conversations with her at any time? Uh, later time I did, yes. Okay. Do you remember when that was? When she was not a uh, <coughs> White House staff member. When she, she didn't have a pass, she had to be cleared in for an appointment. Okay. And where were you posted at that I time? And what was the nature of your encounter with her that day? When she would come in? Well, there were several times. Okay. All right. As far as do any of them stand out? One in particular does, yes. Okay, can you tell us about that one? It was uh, September or December 6th of 97. Mm -hmm. I remember it was a Saturday morning. Yes. Okay. Do you remember approximately what time in the morning it was? That she came in or... Or what? You first heard that she was there? Right, yeah. 
Okay. I was going to Did you hear her. that she was there before she before you saw her? Somebody else notified me that uh, she was okay. at the White House complex. Okay. Who, who was that? Betty Curry. And approximately what time did that occur? Around nine o'clock in the morning. On a Saturday morning. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what did Betty Curry say to you? She said that uh, Monica was out the Northwest Gate and that uh, she wanted to help pull Monica out there for about 40 minutes because the president already had another guest in the Oval at the time. Did Betty tell you this in person or on the telephone? On the telephone. And do you know where she was calling from? From her office. Okay, outside the Oval Office? Right. And she had a direct line to my post. Mm -hmm. um, and she, you said she told you that, um, to, that Monica was where? At the Northwest Gate. And that she should be held there? Right. For approximately how About, long? About uh, a half hour. Okay. You said a moment ago, 40 minutes. This is uh, somewhere around? 30 minutes. 30? 40, 40 minutes somewhere in that time frame. And she said the reason for that was what? That the president already had a uh, guest in the Oval Office at that time. Did she tell you who that was? Yes. Who was that? It was Eleanor Mondale. Okay. Um, did you know that Eleanor Mondale was there that day? Yes. Okay. How did you know that? Because she came to my post earlier. Okay, and was she a guest of the president, Eleanor Mondale, that day? Yeah. Okay. Um, did Betty Curry say anything else to you on the telephone? No. no. What did you say to her, if anything? I told her I would notify the Northwest Gate and let her let them know. Okay. Um, on any prior occasions, did Betty Curry ever ask you to hold Monica at um, at an entrance or at a passageway to wait to get to get in? Outside the this? Yeah. No. That was the only time that ever happened. Mm -hmm. Um, did you make a call after you hung up with Betty Curry? Yes, I did. Who did you call? I called uh, Sergeant Keith Williams. And where was he located when you called him? He was him? at the Northwest Gate. Okay, and what did you say to him? I told uh, Sergeant Williams that uh, Betty had a guest out there, Monica, and that uh, they wanted to hold her up for about a half hour to 40 minutes before they were going to clear her in. Okay, did you tell him why? No. Did you tell him that Betty had told you it was because the President had Eleanor Mondale as a guest? Yes. You did tell Mr. Williams yes. that, Sergeant mm -hmm. Williams? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, do you know whether Monica Lewinsky was still at the Northwest Gate at the time that you made that call? Yes, she was. Okay. Do you know whether anything was done after your, your request or instructions um, that you conveyed to Sergeant Williams? Do you know whether anybody held her there or what happened? I know she did not come in at that time. Okay. Did you ever hear whether anything was done pursuant to your request? from anybody else, whether she was told anything, Monica? Yes. Um, what was she told? She was told that uh, she was going to have to wait 40 minutes before she could be cleared in. Do you know whether Monica was told um, that Eleanor Mondale was with the president? Based yes. Based on anything you've heard? Yes. And was. what have you heard? That one of the officers told Monica that she'd have to wait her turn at the president already had a female guest in the Oval. Okay. Do you know whether that officer told um, Monica the name of the female guest to the president? I don't recall that part. Mm -hmm. Who have you heard this from that, that an officer told Monica that she would have to wait her turn because the president had a female guest? The officers that worked at Northwest Gate. Do you know who that was that told you? Uh, it was Brian Hall and, uh, and Sergeant Williams. Okay. Did they both tell you this, Sergeant Williams and Brian Hall? Yes. When did they tell you that they took the, Well, first of all, let me back up for a second. Who told Monica that she had to wait her turn that the president had Eleanor Mondale in his office? Which of the two, if you know? Uh, it was Brian Williams, or Brian Hall. Okay. And do you know that because Brian Hall told you or because you heard from someone else? I heard it from someone else. Who did you hear it from? Uh, Gary Nowitzki. Okay, is that Ms. Wicky? Yeah, he was assigned at the Northwest Gate that day, too. Was he present when Officer Hall, Hall told Monica that she would have to wait her turn? I do not know that. When did Officer Ms. Wicky tell you that Brian Hall told Monica to wait her turn? Was it that day? I believe so, yes. Okay. Was it in person or on the telephone that Officer Ms. Wicky told you that? Telephone. Okay. Um, all right, so going back to where we were, you received a call from Betty Curry, and you conveyed a message to Sergeant Williams, who was at the Northwest Gate. And um, what happened next? Uh, Betty came out. It was probably about uh, 
an hour later after the initial call. And uh, she was upset. She came out to see you? Yes. Mm -hmm. She was upset. And uh, she said that Monica called into her mm -hmm. and uh, told her, was upset that you know, her cousin already had a female guest in the elbow that time. Okay. Did she say anything else that Monica had said to her? Did Betty say anything else that Monica had said to her? Not that I recall, no. Okay. Um, did Betty say anything else to you that um, you can tell us about? No, not, not at that time. Fault. Okay, so there's some additional information that yeah. Betty gave you that you are not going to be testifying about today because right. of a privilege. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anything else about the conversation that Betty had with you at that time that you can tell us about? She wanted the problem resolved, and I told her I would notify the supervisor at the Northwest Gate. Okay. Did you say anything else to her, to Betty? No. Okay. What did you do? Then I contacted Sergeant Williams, and I told him he needed to come in my post to see me that we had a problem. Okay. And um, did you tell him anything specific about the problem? Yeah. I gave him a, uh, a brief description of the problem. Okay. And um, can you do that? Do you want to do, you want to do it now? Okay. I'd like. um, all right. And is there anything that you told him that you can tell us about? Yes. What did you tell me? I told Keith, that, uh, Sergeant Williams, that uh, Monica called into Betty and, you know, she knew about the other guests that the President had at that time mm -hmm. and that Betty was upset and uh, they would like to know who the officer was that told Monica this information. Okay. And did you convey to Officer Williams any of the information that you're taking privilege on? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I, did you do that on the telephone or in person? I did that on the telephone. Okay, and then did Sergeant Williams come to see you after that? Yes, he did. Did he come directly to see you, if yes. you know? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you spoke further? Yes. Is there anything about that conversation that you can tell us about? I just told Sergeant Williams that Betty was very upset and that he needed to go back and address the problem with her. Okay. Anything privileged about that conversation between you and Sergeant Williams at that time, at your post? Yes. Okay. Um, what happened next? Sergeant Williams uh, proceeded back to see Betty uh, okay. in her office. Okay. And um, did you go with him? No. Okay. You stayed at the post. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did Sergeant Williams go to see Betty Curry alone? Yes. Okay. And um, what further contact did you have with regard to this incident next? Sergeant Williams came back out probably about 10 minutes later after speaking to Betty. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was upset. And uh, he said he was going back up to the Northwest Gate to look into the problem mm -hmm. to find out exactly what happened. Did he say anything to you that you were um, taking a privilege on? Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else about that conversation between you and Sergeant Williams that you can tell us about? No. Okay. What happened next? Sergeant Williams went back to the Northwest Gate. Uh, he contacted his supervisor, Captain Jeff Purdy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Captain Purdy responded out to the Northwest Gate at that time. How do you know these things? Sergeant Williams told me. Later? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what happened? And then uh, Sergeant Williams and Captain Purdy came in to my post. Uh, we had a discussion. Uh, so, so I told Captain Purdy that uh, Betty was very upset that uh, he needs to go back and address the problem with her. Any of that conversation privileged? Yes. Okay. And what happened next? The Sergeant Williams and Captain Purdy both proceeded back to Betty's office and they spoke to her. They were probably in there about 15 to 20 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. And what happened next to your knowledge? They both came out to me. This is Williams and Purdy? Uh, yes. And uh, Captain Purdy said that uh, Betty was very upset and that he was going to look into the problem immediately to find out, you know, how the, the situation occurred. Any of that conversation privilege? Yes. Okay. And did you have any further communication with Betty Curry that day? Uh, later in the day I did, yes. Okay. And is that the next thing that happened as far as you were concerned? Yes. Okay. What happened? I can't discuss that. Okay. Did she come out to see you at the yes, post? Yes, in person. Okay. Is there anything about that conversation you can tell us about? No, not at okay. this point. All right. Um, 
Do you have any further information about that whole incident besides what you've told us? Or besides what you've taken the privilege on? No. Did you have any further contact with any of, any of these officers, Hall, Williams, Purdy? Um, after the incident you're talking after about? The, after the episodes that you've already described. We've discussed it, yes. Okay, and when have you discussed it? Uh, probably just like the next day after uh, this incident happened. Mm -hmm. Anything about those discussions that you can talk about? No. Okay. Um, have you discussed it since after that day? After, excuse me, since the day after the incident? Yes. Okay, and when was that? Probably about a month ago. Okay. And was there anything in particular that prompted that conversation? Uh, just the investigation that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything about, who did you speak to at that time Sergeant about a month Williams. ago? You spoke to Sergeant Williams? Mm -hmm. um, is there anything about that conversation that you can tell us? No. Is that, you're taking a privilege on that? Yes. And you've been, um, you've been advised by your lawyers on that particular conversation? Yes. Okay. Um, other than that, that conversation with Sergeant Williams about a month ago, any other conversations with anyone involved in this incident about the incident? Uh, Brian Hall. Okay, when have you discussed it with Hall? Probably in the same time frame. About a month ago? Yeah. Is there anything about that conversation that you can tell us? No. Are you taking a privilege on yeah. that as well? Have you consulted with your lawyers on that particular conversation mm -hmm. with Brian Hall, the one a month ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, conversations with anybody else other than Hall and Williams since the day after the incident? I mean, I've had people in general ask me about the rumors, and I, I don't discuss it, but not on the job. Okay. What about um, Betty Curry? Have you spoken to her after um, the day of the incident about that incident? After it? No. Mm -hmm. No. Never again? No. Go ahead. Um, just for the record, uh, we need to know what privilege you're asserting as to the, the conversations, and I know there are a number of them with which uh, you are asserting a privilege. Yes. Um, so if we could step back through them briefly. You described uh, at least one conversation with Betty Curry. Uh, are you asserting the protective function privilege as to that, or the executive privilege, or, or both? For the uh, protection. Privilege. Protective function mm -hmm. privilege? Yes. Okay. Uh, would the answer be the same as to your conversations with Sergeant Williams and Captain Purdy? Yes. Uh, and with Officer Hall? Yes. Uh, are there any statements that any of those individuals made to you uh, in which they described something that the President said? Uh, yes. Uh, can you tell us what the president said to those individuals that they relayed to you? Uh, not to invoke the uh, privilege on that. Okay. And is that executive privilege or protective function privilege? Again, just for the record. Protective. Okay. Well, can we take a brief uh, yes, we recess can. and go off the record? Go off the record at 41550. Back on the record, 425.58. Okay, Officer Chinnery, before uh, you stepped out to consult with your attorneys, I had asked whether in any of your conversations with Betty Curry, Sergeant Williams, Captain Purdy, anybody recounted to you a statement that the President had made to them. Yes. Uh, and I asked whether you could tell me the substance of any of those statements as they were relayed to you uh, and you asserted protective function privilege, I believe, at that time. Yes. Is that correct? Uh, let me uh, ask the question again and, and uh, I understand that there may be a different privilege now. Uh, uh, are you able to tell us the substance of any of those statements? No. Okay. I'm going to invite my attorneys, I'm going to invoke the presidential communication privilege. Okay. Uh, is that as to Betty Curry, Sergeant Williams, and Captain Purdy? 
yeah, in all three cases. Mm -hmm. uh, that also applied to your conversation with Officer Hall that you mentioned was about a month ago? Yes. Okay. Okay, now, um, you said earlier that you saw Monica Lewinsky at the White House after she left her employment at the White House. And, and this one particular instance that you've been talking about today, which happened in December of 97, you told us, is one that stood out. Is that correct? Correct. But there were other occasions when you saw Monica Lewinsky at the White House after she left her employment there. That correct? is correct. Um, before I ask you about those, um, to your knowledge, when did Monica Lewinsky leave her employment at the White House? Uh, I'm not sure the exact... I remember it was uh, around uh, January. Of what year? Uh, well, 96. All right. And um, did you ever hear anything about why she left? Or how, under what circumstances she left? Just rumors. Mm -hmm. General rumors. What did you hear? That uh, she spent too much time in the West Wing. Okay. Um, did you hear anything about whether she was asked to leave? And if so, by whom? I heard she was asked to leave, yes. Do you know by whom? Uh, Leon Panetta and uh, the ladies. I can't remember her name. Evelyn uh, Lieberman? Lieberman, that's correct. Okay. And do you know whether Leon Panetta spoke directly to her based on anything you heard from anybody else? Did Mr. Panetta speak directly to Monica when she left? Uh, just about from her? rumors, I heard that uh, Eleanor, or, uh, Evelyn? Evelyn Lieberman spoke to, uh, to Monica. Monica. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember anyone that you spoke to about these rumors? Or anyone who told you these rumors? Uh, Officer Gary Burns. Okay. Anyone else? No, not offhand. Okay. What do you remember about um, any of the times that Monica came back to the White House after she left, setting aside this December 97 incident that you've already told us about? She seemed to always visit on the weekends, usually Saturday morning or Sunday morning. Is this when you're working? Right. And um, when you say Saturday mornings, generally what time of day? Anywhere from 8 in the morning to 10 in the morning. Was there a particular pattern to these visits in terms of, you know, who she would be coming to see or... Yes. What, what would the pattern be? Well, Betty Curry would always clear her in mm -hmm. as far as an appointment. Okay. Um, was she... Do, do you have computer records that you have access to that reflect visitors for the day at the White House? Yes. And would she be on those in those records? Yes, it would come up on my computer. Okay, and on the computer, would it reflect who Monica Lewinsky was coming to see? Yes. And what would the computer say? It would say Betty Curry cleared did, her in. Mm -hmm. Did it ever vary from that that you know of? No, not that I know of. Okay. Um, did Betty ever call you in advance and tell you that Monica was expected? Um, on occasion, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about those conversations beyond what I just asked you? Betty would tell me I have a guest coming in, you know who it is. She'll probably be here in about 10 minutes. Just okay. hold her out there. And she would say to you, you know, you know who it is? Mm -hmm. And um, did she do that on more than one occasion, use the words, you know who it is? Offhand, maybe three to four times that I can remember. Okay. Um, and when she said the words, you know who it is, who did you understand her to mean? Monica. Okay. And about how many times did, did this type of pattern occur? Where Monica would come in on a Saturday morning, in your experience, that you know of? Maybe 10, 15. Okay. Was Betty Curry involved in all of those, as the person that Monica was coming to see? Yes, that I dealt with, yes. Okay. And did Betty always call you, or not always, or more often than not? More know? often than not, yes, she would. So more often than not, it would begin by Betty calling you and saying, I have a visitor, you know who it is, mm -hmm. or? I'll be out in a few minutes to pick her up. Okay. And where would Monica be when Betty would make that call to you? Uh, she'd just be coming in probably at the northwest gate. Mm -hmm. So once she was cleared at the gate, Monica would approach your desk? Right. She would come up to my post, yes. Okay. And did you ever have any conversation with Monica during those visits? Very briefly. I would tell her just to have a seat that Betty would be out in a couple minutes to pick her up. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything... Um, did she ever said to you, that Monica ever said to you during any of those conversations? No, we didn't have 
any conversations. Was she friendly to you? No. Did she know you by name? Not that I'm aware of, no. Did she ever make any effort, Monica, to enter into a social dialogue with you about yourself, your family, your no. friends, anything like that? Mm -hmm. um, did she ever have anything with her when she came to the White House, Monica? No, not that I remember. Did she ever come with any gifts or packages that you recall? No. Okay. Um, so she would wait by you until Betty came? Yes. When Betty came, did you ever get over here any conversations between her and Betty? Just a real brief conversation. Let's go. Okay. Um, anything beyond that? No. Okay. Um, They'd be walking down the hall away from me as, as they were talking, so I wouldn't be able to hear all the conversation. Can you tell us anything about Monica's demeanor during any of those visits? Mm. She seemed happy, upset. Um, any any kind of emotion reflected in the way she appeared on any of those? She seemed kind of gloom. I, I mean, kind, kind of what? Kind of gloom. She didn't... Uh, Sad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I want to go back for a moment to the December of 97 um, visit just for a minute because there's a question I forgot to ask you. Um, do you know whether Monica ever came into the White House yes, she that did. day? Yes, she did. She mm did. -hmm. How do you know that? Because it came up on my uh, computer. Okay. You did not see her yourself? No. Do you know in the sequence of events at what point Monica did arrive at the White House that day? Probably from the initial call that I got from Betty, it was probably about uh, an hour later. Okay. And where was it in the sequence of... Um, either calls to, to you from Betty or visits by Williams to you or, or to Betty? Do you have any idea where in that... That it, it was probably after Sergeant Williams and Captain Purdy came in to see Betty. Okay. That Monica made it into the right. White House. Mm -hmm. And you know that because of your computer records. Right, it came up on the printout. Okay. Um, so returning to the general category of, I think you said, was it 12 to 15 visits? Yeah. That you know of 10 on to 15, Saturday. somewhere in there. 10 to 15, generally on Saturdays. Saturdays or Sunday Sat mornings. Yeah. Saturdays or Sunday mornings. Um, and you said Monica seemed sad. Um, she didn't spend a whole lot of time with me. I mean, it was only a few minutes, then Betty mm -hmm. would come out and get her. Did Betty ever speak to you when she came out to get Monica? No. Did Betty seem, how did Betty seem about? Um, she seemed like she was in a rush. She was just like, come on, let's go, let's go. And that was it. Are you friendly with Betty Curry? We're good, we're friends, yes. Mm -hmm. Would she normally engage you in conversation if she came out to pick up a guest? No, because she's picked up her husband before out there, and mm -hmm. I mean, if she's busy back there, she doesn't have time to talk, so... Now, um... After Betty would come and pick up Monica, where would they go? In what direction? They would head back towards the old old Betty's office. Okay. Um, did you ever see Monica again on any of those occasions when she came in on... Any of these mornings on Saturday or Sunday after after Betty she came would, to pick her up? No, she wouldn't leave from my post. Okay. Do you know um, on those occasions, the, the 10, to 20, 10 to 15 times that you're testifying about here generally when Monica Lewinsky would come in on a Saturday or Sunday, um, do you know anything about the whereabouts of the president on those days? Yes. What do you know? I would know what his location is. Okay, and what was his location? I need to consult with my attorney. Okay, you can step out. Just the record 43605. Okay. Record 47051. Okay, officer. Um, have you had an opportunity to, to consult with your lawyers? Yes, I have. Okay, and um, the question pending was, um, did you do you have any knowledge of the president's whereabouts um, when on these occasions on Saturday and Sunday mornings when Monica Lewinsky would come to the White House? Yes. And what do you know? He was, uh, half the time he'd be located in the residence, the other half he'd be located in the Oval Office. And how do you know those things? And on the occasions when he was in the residence, um, do you have any knowledge of any movements that he made from the residence? Yes. What do you know? It'd be a short time span after she would come in as an appointment that he would move from the residence over to the Oval. Did that happen on each and every occasion when he was in the residence? 
when Monica came um, to the White House on these early Saturday and Sunday mornings? As far as I can recall, yes. Now, um, did you ever hear um, from anyone else anything about any of these visits by Monica to the White House? As far as their intent? As far as anything that ever happened, you know, or, or occurred on any of these visits. Did you ever hear from anybody else in the White House, either a Secret Service employee or not, about what subsequently happened after Monica and Betty left your post and proceeded towards the Oval Office? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, who have you heard from? I'm Nelvis. Okay. What have you heard? We, we, we had discussions, uh, or he discussed with me a couple of times, Monica visit the president in the Oval. What, would he, what did he tell you? That uh, <clears throat> after their visit, he, would, he found a, a tissue in the uh, garbage can that had lipstick on it, and he was tired of cleaning up their mess after their visit. Okay. Did that happen after one of these Saturday, Sunday morning visits? Or on another No, occasion? I believe that happened when she was still an intern, and uh, she worked over in East Wayne. Okay. We'll turn to that in a moment, but other than that conversation or conversations with Nelvis, um, who is Bionni Nelvis, is that correct? Yes. Um, other than, than those conversations, have you ever heard from any other source, either an employee of the White House or Secret Service, anything about um, what happened during any of these visits by Monica to the White House that you've been testifying about, the early Saturday, Sunday morning visits? No. Okay. Um, is there anything that you recall about Monica's appearance, what she wore on any of these occasions? She always had a black dress on. Okay. And do you remember anything about the black dress? It was low cut. Okay. Um, how often did she wear that dress? I think every time she came in, she had that dress on. Okay. And um, over what period of time did these 10 to 15 visits occur? When she left the White House and came back to an appointment with us. Exactly. But she's already, she's not an employee anymore at the uh -huh. White House. She's coming back on early Saturday and Sunday mornings as you testified. What period of time did this occur? Um, what years, what time of the year, about, over how many of 96? 97. 97, excuse right. me, okay. From that point until that December 6th, that's when I noticed these visits. Okay, so the visits that you're testifying about occurred um, somewhere between you were being assigned to March of 97 through the end of the year of 97. Right. Okay. Um, are you able to tell us anything more specific about any of the dates or months of any of these visits? No. I, I mean, I just don't remember offhand the exact mm -hmm. dates of all the visits. Do any of them um, click in your mind with any particular event that was going on in, in the White House at that time? No. It was, it was on a Saturday. It was quiet. There wasn't much going on. Um, what about time of year? Do you have any recollection as to whether um, there was a particular time of year that more of them occurred than others, or did they span that whole period of time? They were pretty well spread out. <clears throat> did um, this dress that Monica wore, the black dress that you told us about, do you know whether it was a sleeveless dress? If you I, know. I don't remember. Okay. Do you know if she ever wore a coat during any of those um, visits? If she did, she took it off once she got to my post. Okay. All right. Um, was there any particular occasion um, during any of these visits where Betty Curry asked you to hold Monica at your post? Uh, just the one December 6th. That's the one that sticks out. Was there ever an occasion where Betty Curry told you that she had to move the president to the study? Yes. Okay. Was that the December visit or another time? That was a, uh, another time. Tell us about that. She said that I'll be able to pick up Monica in a few minutes. I need to move the president back to the study. Okay. And um, when Monica would arrive at your post, would you call Betty then and say she's here? 
Where would Betty come generally out and pick her up? Betty would generally come out and pick her up. Okay. So when Betty told you on this one occasion that, that to hold Monica for a few minutes that she had to move the president back to the study, was that during the call when she would call you and tell her Monica's here? Tell you Monica's yeah, here? Yeah, she called me and said Monica will be there in a few minutes. Okay. Told her out there. When Betty Curry said that she had to move the president back to the study, did, what did she mean, if you know? I don't know. Just said that she was, you know, the president was going to move back to the study. That's as far as I can interpret it. Okay. Did she say, I have to move him back to the study, or he's going to move back to the study, referring to the president? She said, I have to move him. Um, was that by any chance during the period of time um, when the president had um, any physical injuries, you know? I don't remember, no. Okay. On that occasion when um, Betty told you to hold Monica um, because she had to move the president back to the study, um, what, if anything, did you tell Monica when she got there? I just told Monica it would be about five minutes before Betty could come and pick you up. Okay, and nothing further? No, that was it. And in fact, how long did Monica have to wait for Betty on that occasion? Maybe ten minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, do you have anything on that you want to ask on that, that series? Okay. All right, you mentioned Bionni Nelvis a moment ago. Um, you do know Bionni Nelvis, is yes. that correct? Mm -hmm. And who is he? He is the President's Navy steward. Okay, and how long have you known him? Approximately about five years, four or five years. Okay, and how well do you know him? We, I mean, we have conversations about the board. And, uh, just things in general. Mm -hmm. And how did you come to know him? I'm working back at the Oval okay, when I was on a time. Uh-huh. And any particular post, um, would you become more friendly with him? Glenn Mays. Yes. And who is he? He is also a uh, Navy steward. And how well do you know him? Uh, we're friends. We talk about sports. So it's between him and Bionni Nelvis, which, if any of them, are you more friendly with? Nelvis. Okay. And do you know um, anything about any relationship between Monica Lewinsky and Bionni Nelvis? Yes. What do you know? I know they were good friends. Uh, <clears throat> when I was back at work, she called back on the phone in the pantry and to talk to Nelvis. How do you know that she did that? Because Nelvis told me she was talking, he was talking to her. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Uh, it was right after the time that uh, Monica was uh, moved from the White House to the Pentagon. And then uh, Nelvis said he just got off the phone speaking to Monica that they were going to have dinner that night because she wanted his shoulders to cry on. Mm -hmm. And in fact, had you seen Bonnie Nelvis on the telephone in the pantry? Yes. yes. Okay. There is a telephone in the pantry? Right. Okay. Were there any other ca other occasions when um, you learned that Bonnie Nelvis was talking to Monica on the pantry phone? No, that's the only one I know of. Mm -hmm. And um, do you know whether, in fact, Bonnie Nelvis had dinner with Monica after that telephone call? I believe they did, yes, because he was telling me he was going to meet her later that night for dinner once he got off work. He wasn't sure what time he was going to get off work because the president was still in the Oval. Okay. Did um, you ever discuss that dinner with Bionni Nelvis after it occurred? No. Do you know about any other times when Monica Lewinsky and Bionni Nelvis met up, socialized together, either for dinner or lunch or drinks or any other meeting outside the White House? No. Um, Other than that telephone conversation um, that Bionni Nelvis told you about that he had with Monica Lewinsky, um, did Bionni Nelvis ever talk to you about Monica? Yes. Um, what did he tell you? That uh, she would come in to see the president and that uh, <clears throat> they would ha have visits in the study. Okay. 
Um, on how many occasions did he tell you that? I don't remember. More than once? Yeah. Okay. And do you remember anything more specific about those conversations other than what you just told us? Just the one the comment he made that he was tired of cleaning up their mess after him, that he would always find a tissue in a garbage can with lipstick on it. He wished they'd clean up their own mess. <clears throat> How many times did he say that to you, about the same tissues? Uh, once. Okay. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but other than that, that same tissue incident, um, did by any Nobis ever tell you anything more about um, Monica coming in to see the president? No. Okay. So you've testified that, that Bionni Nobis told you that Monica would come in to see the president, correct? Mm -hmm. And that they would visit in the study, correct? Yes. Um, did he tell you that more than once? Just once. Just once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you remember whether he told you that before he told you about the lipstick stain tissues or after? Or the same? I believe it was before. Okay. And was there anything else about that conversation that you remember? No, it's just the tissue parts stood out. Well, that's a, a different conversation. Mm -hmm. But is there anything, correct? Right. Was there anything about the conversation where Bionni Nelvis was telling you that Monica came in to see the president and they would have visits in the study? Is there anything else about that conversation that you remember? No. Um, how did Bionni seem when he told you that Monica would come in to see the president and they would have visits in the study? Like he was disgusted. <clears throat> did you say anything to Bionni and Nelvis in, in that conversation? Um, where he related to you that Monica would visit the president in the study? No. Um, did Nelvis ever indicate to you that, that he was worried about Monica or upset or wanted to help her or wanted to talk to her about any of this, anything like that? The only thing he indicated to me that he wanted to talk to her when they had dinner when, when she called. Okay. Now, when she called, um, you testified that Monica was upset about being transferred. Right. According to Nelvis. No, um, did Nelvis indicate to you that when he um, was going to have dinner with Monica that he would speak to her about um, her visits to the study to see the president? He or? didn't indicate anything to me. Okay. Did, he, did Nelvis ever indicate to you an intention to speak to Monica about her visits to the study? No. Did Nelvis tell you how he knew that Monica came to visit the president in the study? Well, it worked back there. Okay, but did he tell you, I've seen this myself, or Monica's told me, or other people have told me? Do you know how he knew? He said he saw it himself. Okay. Did he tell you how many occasions he saw this on? No. Was it your impression that he saw it more than once? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Now, um, you mentioned a conversation a few minutes ago um, that you had with Bionni Melvis where he discussed um, lipstick stain material. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us to the best of your memory about that conversation? The conversation, they did his exact words were, he was tired of cleaning up their mess, but he'd always find tissue in the garbage cans with lipstick on it. Did he tell you what garbage can he would find this in? The, the garbage can in the pantry. Okay. How many doors does the pantry have? As far as what, leading out? E in or out? One. Okay, is there only one, a one way in and one way out? Is there only one door entering the pantry, or is there a door on the other side of the pantry leading out? Well, there's a door that leads into what you call the family dining room. Mm -hmm. There's a door there, and then there's another door at the front of the pantry that leads back out to the hallway. Okay, so the pantry could be used as a passageway? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you know whether Monica has ever used the pantry as a passageway? No, I don't know that. Okay. Um, did Nelvis indicate to you that he always found the tissue in the garbage can in the pantry? No, he didn't indicate that uh, he, it, I interpreted that uh, he found it on several occasions. Okay, but did he, did he say always in this garbage can or how, how did that come up where he found it? Um, well, he pointed to the garbage can and said, I'm tired of cleaning up their mess every time she leaves. There's a tissue in there. It's got lipstick on it. And she said, I don't, you know, I don't want to clean it up anymore. 
he was pointing to the garbage can right. in the pantry. Right. And you were standing near the pantry right. when you had that conversation with uh -huh. Melvis. Um, and that conversation you said took place after the conversation that you had with Melvis about Monica visiting the president in the study. Right. And do you remember when this conversation took place about the lipstick stain tissue? Uh, I remember it was during the winter months. I'm not sure exactly, like December, January, somewhere in there. What year? 96. It was mm -hmm. right after she got transferred to the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And do you have any idea when that conversation took place about the lipstick stain tissue in relation to the previous conversation about Monica visiting the president in the study? I believe it was all on the same day. On the same day? Yes. But the other one happened first? Which one? All right. So, so first, Bayani Melvis told you that Monica would visit the president in the study. Right. And then he told you about lipstick stain tissue. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that those two conversations happened on the same day? Right. So it happened on the same day. I was working back there that day, mm -hmm. and uh, Melvis was talking, first talked about the, the, you know, the visits with Monica. And then he got called away to do something, then he came back and he started talking about the garbage can and the tissue in there. And then later in the day, then Monica called on the pantry phone and talked to him. And then he came out and told me that they were going to have dinner that night and that, uh, you know, she wanted to show her to cry on. So all of those three conversations happened all, happen all on the same, same day. day? Yes. By any notice, was two conversations with you and then his telephone conversation with Monica right. and subsequently telling you that he was going to have dinner with Monica. Uh -huh. All of that happened all on the same day. day yes. When Bionni Novus told you about the lipstick stain tissue in, in the garbage can, um, how did he seem when he talked to you about that? I mean, he seemed like he was disgusted that he had to clean up after their mess. Okay. And, and again, so the record is clear, he, he indicated to you or you understood him to mean that it was on more than one occasion that he yes. had cleaned up tissue. Yes. Um, did you ever learn about lipstick stain tissue from anybody else other than Melvis? No. Okay. Um, do you know whether any other Secret Service employees know about this lipstick stain yes. tissue? Who? Gary Burns. How do you know that he knows? Because uh, after that incident, me and Gary talked. Okay. Does he know it from you or from someone someone else? He probably knows it. Well, he knows it from me. And that he told me that Melvis told him the same story. Okay. Um, did you ever see any lipstick stain tissue? No, I never saw it. Do you know whether anybody else besides Melvis has seen it? I don't know that. No. Do you recall that Melvis used the word tissue? Yes. Mm -hmm. at all when you spoke to Bayani Melvis about th that day, these three conversations at least that you had with him. Do you remember anything that you said to Bayani Melvis when he was telling you, um, you know, about Monica visiting the study, about recovering tissues, about him going, you know, to have dinner with Monica? Did you say anything to Bayani Melvis at all that you remember? Uh, we had a conversation about them having dinner. Uh, I, I said that basically what she needed a shoulder to cry on. Is she trying to to approach you so you'll approach the president and try to get her back, you know, assigned to the White House. Mm -hmm. And do you remember anything that Bionni Novus said? He just said he was going to go have dinner as a friend. That's all he told me. Do you know anything about um, a desire on the part of Monica to get back into the White House to work? No. That is Okay. Um, did Did Elvis ever tell you anything that Monica Lewinsky had told him about her relationship with the president? No. Mm -hmm. um, did he, did by any Elvis ever tell you um, that Monica had given any gifts to the president? No. Did he ever, did by any Elvis ever tell you that uh, the president had given any gifts to Monica? No. Um, did by any Elvis ever tell you that Monica Lewinsky had given him by any Elvis gifts? No. Do you know whether Bionni Novus ever gave any gifts to Monica? No. Um, do you know whether Bionni Novus ever gave Monica any White House trinkets like M&Ms or um, any other no, not that I'm aware of. presidential sealed items, anything like that? No. Okay. Um, did Bionni Novus ever discuss the Paula Jones lawsuit with you? No. 
Did you ever over see, did you ever see Bonnie Nelvis and Monica Lewinsky together? No. Um, you said, said a few moments ago that um, the rumor that you heard um, as to why Monica Lewinsky left employment at the White House was because she had spent too much time in the West Wing. Um, do you have any opinion yourself as to whether Monica Lewinsky spent too much time in the West Wing, based on any observations that you made? From what I observed, yes, she spent a lot of time in the West Wing. When she was employed there? Yes. <clears throat> More than other yes. East Wing employees? Yes. I mean, even on the weekends, she'd be walking around there in the West Wing when there's no functions going on or nobody's working in their offices. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard anything um, other than the Northwest Gate incident and on December 6th of 97 that you've testified about. Have you ever heard from any other Secret Service officers anything about any other visits by Monica Lewinsky to the White House? No. <clears throat> Have you um, ever seen Monica Lewinsky in the Oval Office? No. Have you ever seen her in the study? No. Have you ever seen her in the president's dining room? No. Have you ever seen her in the pantry? No. Um, have you ever seen her in the walkway by the study in the pantry in the dining room? No. Do you um, have any information from anybody at all about any relationship between Monica Lewinsky and the president other than what you've already told us? No. Okay. Just have a minute. Have you ever had any conversations with Officer uh, Robert Almasi about Monica Lewinsky? Yes. Can you tell us uh, what you discussed? We discussed the incident that happened at the Northwest Gate in December. Were you describing what you had heard about that incident to Officer Almasi, or was he telling he, you about it? He said he heard a rumor about something that happened at Northwest Gate, so he was asking me about it, and uh, I informed him how the incident actually happened. What was his response? It seemed shocked. Did he relate anything about Monica Walensky to you on that occasion? No. Just that he didn't want to be involved with it. Uh, but he was, he was shocked at what you were telling him. Uh, is what you told him, uh, in essence, the same thing that you've described to us here yes, today? Yes, yes. Uh, other than, than being shocked, did he have any other response? Mm. He just asked me, you know, the details of the incident. Uh, I relayed that to him. And uh, he made the uh, statement he's glad he wasn't working that day. That's one thing I remember offhand. Did you understand him to uh, mean when he said that that he was glad he wasn't working that day because uh, the officers involved might have gotten in trouble? Yeah, that's how I interpreted it. Do you recall when you had that conversation with him? Probably like in the end of December, the first part of January. I'm not sure, somewhere in that time frame. And that's December 97, right. January uh -huh. 98, yeah. approximately. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you anything, uh, any, any sort of rumor about Monica Lewinsky and the president um, being caught in a compromising position in the White House movie theater? I mean, we've, I've heard ge general rumors, and people just talk. And you're talking about the incident in the theater? Can you tell us uh, what you've heard regarding that? Uh, I've heard
heard different versions of the rumor that they were caught by different people in the family theater. Uh, one name was John Muscat caught him. Uh, Lieutenant uh, Mussolino from ERT. I mean, the story changes every time you hear it. Have you spoken with uh, either Officer Muscat or Lieutenant Mussolino about these rumors? Just Officer Muscat. What did Officer Muscat tell you when you talked he, to him about it? He said it was not him that caught him. Uh, can you tell us exactly what he said? That it, Officer Muscat? Yes. I, uh, I approached him and said, you know, I heard this rumor about you catching the President Monica in the family theater. He kind of laughed and he said, no, it wasn't me. And that was the end of the conversation. Do you recall when you had that conversation with him? No, I can't remember. It was a while ago. Did he suggest to you that uh, that might have taken place and that it might have been somebody else who walked into the movie theater? Well, I mean, he just said it wasn't him. He didn't suggest anything beyond that point. Okay. D did you understand him when he said that to mean that it hadn't happened at all? Or that it might have happened, but it, it wasn't It might have happened. happened, but it wasn't him that caught him. Yeah, that's the way I interpreted it. Okay. Yeah, um, just a couple of final questions. Um, did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you um, whether he had ever met Monica Lewinsky on any trip that he, Bionni Nelvis, took with the president? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, since this story became public um, in January of 1998, have you had any conversations with Bionni Nelvis about Monica Lewinsky? No. I am finished. We'll return with more testimony in a minute. First, we'd like to let you know about some upcoming programming. Tomorrow morning on Washington Journal, we'll look at international issues with Mort Halpern of the State Department and Paul Wolfowitz of Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Washington Journal, weekdays beginning at 7.30.